Hey everybody, welcome back. Marcus Graves back again with another review, this time to Amazon's original series, The Boys. An adaptation of a comic series written by Garth Ennis and co-created, designed, and illustrated by Derek Robertson, stars Carl Urban, Jack Quaid, and Anthony Starr in a story about a world where superheroes are highly regarded and media saturating. However, in this world, heroism is a brand and a market. No one saves for the good of saving. They save because they will get more sponsors, more brand deals, perhaps a movie. Butcher, played by Carl Urban, enlists the help of an unassertive and almost timid man named Huey, played by Jack Quaid, who has become disillusioned with supers after a tragedy. The story in a nutshell is a story of price, consequence. What price are you willing to pay for what you want, or what you need, or what you feel you need? It's one of parallels between the paths of vengeance and obsession, and restoration and connection. In a world of heroes who could easily destroy you with the flick of a finger, and heroes that would not hesitate to do so, neither path seems to have a high percentage for fortuitous outcome. Through the character of Starlight, played by Aaron Moriarty, this question is also presented. What does it take to be a superhero when superheroes are branding and merchandise? Moreover, is it worth it to be a hero? What does it even mean now? The story is thematic and consistent in its major arcs. The story is rife with character ambiguity, particularly in its latter half. Not ambiguous due to how those characters are constructed, but the character choices within the story are ambiguous. There are the extremes of hero and villain, but when the heroes are corporate props, and the ordinary citizens will do whatever it takes for vengeance against them, the two sides, despite the hate they have for each other, are they more alike than they care to admit? Getting more into the production side of things, the performances of Carl Urban and Jack Quaid are very expressive and very dynamic. Elizabeth Shue performs her character of Madeline Stilwell uh, very deftly. It's, it, it's, it's a muted expressiveness. I don't remember at this moment in time any point where she becomes widely expressive. Her performance is a lot more muted, however, it does, that does not mean it lacks expressiveness, it's just more uh, understated. However, far and away, far and away, the breakout performance of this show is Anthony Starr as the Homelander. Remember when I mentioned wide expression and muted expression before? This man goes through both. For example, conveying the affability and interpersonal nature of the character of Homelander that he presents to the public, a facade that swiftly fades away and fades into disdain and disaffectedness. Just one example of the various uh, facets and ranges that Star hits and touches upon and, 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 and delves into for this performance whether it be his eyes and the restraint or impatience that he'll show, he leaves no aspect of his body out of his performance. He leaves no aspect of him out of his range. Far and away, the breakout actor. The CGI is rarely, if ever, incongruous with the practical elements that are within the frame, although a stretchy soup does come to mind. We never have been able to get that just right and make it look completely consistent with practical elements yet, have we? <laughs> Speaking of the CGI and, and the portrayal of superpowered individuals in contrast or sometimes against the mundane conveys the ordinary characters' stifled and rapidly decreasing options in the face of such a threat in a very violent way that shows the vast chasm between these two factions. And while it certainly shows the power of soups, it also shows the resilience and the ingenuity of humanity 
in the face of it. There are a few limiting elements in the show. Some performances, uh, one particular fight sequence that I'm thinking of, that was, it was a night shoot, and the choreography was not just of the fight, but also of uh, camera setups and camera movement, seemed very erratic and disjointed. And to call one out in particular, just to give an instance, is a seemingly inconsistent and shifting narrative weight on the uh, on a particular character. This character's impact overall can be seen when her character starts making certain choices. No spoilers, but I'm thinking of a plane. When that character starts making choices that buck the status quo of the heroes, if I remember correctly, there was no narrative conveyance of a conflict or any narrative weight put on it previously. This makes the moment and character seemingly out of sync. Now, once this shift has occurred, the character is congruous and impacts not only the story, but particularly this character's story impacts the story of another character. But how it was executed in that moment seems a narrative divergence. With all that being said, what's the rating, the frame rating of Amazon's The Boys? The frame rating that I'm giving for The Boys is three-fourths of a full frame. A majority, dynamic and well-crafted project with some limiting elements to it. Alright guys, that is my review for Amazon's The Boys. If you enjoyed my video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're so inclined. Check out my channel for all my other content that I have on there. My short films, Yin and Yang, and Assassin of the Flame. Reviews, breakdowns, all that good stuff, and much, much more to come. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.